G'day YouTube. I'm making this video because I couldn't actually find any Grok AI prompt testing on YouTube. And I know that's crazy to say. There was some very old stuff that didn't really apply anymore. So here I am starting from scratch with a video like this. So here we have it. You get your premium membership on the X platform. Then you can start using Grok AI, region dependent. And it is Grok version 1.5. So I'm gonna just start from the top and uh, say hello to it. Now, it does start out in fun mode. So you've gotta be very aware of this. So I'm gonna ask it, hey, how are you today? And we'll see what sort of response we get. And there we go. Being a bit fun and cheery right there. But what most people will use, and I can appreciate, is the regular mode where most benchmark tests seem to indicate that Grok marginally performs worse or better than some of the other main players out there, such as GPT or Claude AI. But let's run some quick tests, shall we? So a couple of quick, easy questions that are good at testing the actual AI strength is, first of all, give me a sentence or 10 sentences that end in the word Apple. So we'll give that a shot now, hit enter and wait for the response. First one, good. Second one, no. Third, no. Fourth, no. Fifth, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we got one out of 10. Not a great start to a test. Having said that, a lot of AI do, in fact, get this test wrong as well. But also, let's ask it, can you generate images? So this should give us a answer. Yes, there are AI images that can uh, get available to create images based on text prompts and descriptions, but no, Grok cannot do that yet. Now, here's another test question that I always like to ask the LLMs, the AI LLMs, is, which is, what version are you? And uh, we'll hit enter. We can already see down the bottom what the answer is, Grok version 1.5, but let's have a look. Okay, that didn't seem to work. Uh, what version of Grok are you? Version 0, 1, or 1.5? Wait for an answer here. And a little bit slow. Oh, fantastic. So a lot of actual AI LLMs don't know what they are because they're all there. For example, ChatGPT4 is trained on the data sets of, of 3.5. So it actually thinks it's 3.5. It's the same with a lot of other uh, AI, uh, AI LLMs. So it's good to see a little bit of self-awareness for, for Grok AI. Then as another simple AI test, we'll ask it uh, how many words are in your next response? So this is tricky because it has to figure it out ahead of time. And we'll hit enter and see what it comes back with. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So it did quite well pre-plan the answer, but um, it's, it's not your typical answer, I suppose. Usually the response should be something like, there are seven words in my answer. And it's usually, well, it's half the time it's right or wrong, depending on the LLM there. So since it seems self-aware enough, let's ask it what it can do. So what can you do? And we'll see what it likes to uh, come back with here. Okay, it can answer almost any question. It aims to be truthful, this, this, and that but not quite the answer I was looking for. So what if I ask it, can you generate code? Because we already know, we'll pop in that right, generate. Because we already know that, uh, you know, it doesn't generate images, at least at this stage. So we'll see if it's, um, yes, it can generate code. Now, obviously something that you probably noticed here already is every time it comes back with an answer, it uh, usually has a corresponding tweet that doesn't always relate. I'm sure this will get better, but it's not perfect at the moment. Having said that, uh, Grok AI has the capability of accessing data that no other AI LLM can, which is Twitter or x.com tweets. And almost in real time. I tested this out just before, just to see. It's more like it takes 24 hours to, to get access to the tweets, which is still, well, it's not fantastic, but a lot better than all of the other uh, competitors out there. Now, the biggest thing you want to be aware of <laughs> is fun mode. I was using it uh, just before the video now, and it was giving me wrong information, knowingly giving me wrong information. And I, I got it to really simply admit to that shortly thereafter. 
it seemed to apologize as it was saying something like my account, my Twitter account was banned in Iran, North Korea, Russia, and China because I was a dissenting voice. <laughs> so it claimed. Now I don't do that many tweets, so I was a bit confused by that. Only then realizing that fun mode is not, uh, well, it's not bad, but it's, it's not exactly for good for using for work purposes, for instance. But since we're back in fun mode, let's ask it a question or two, since uh, re really simple questions, not really testing it, but uh, who will be the next US president? And there we go, see what it likes to come back with there. Okay, I think it's safe to say that the US president will either be a former president or a current president. <laughs> okay, I guess that's probably accurate. But definitely someone who has been in the spotlight for a while. Usually the case as well. A little bit generic though. And here we go, in the fun mode. It's like a game of political musical chairs. But instead of chairs, it's the Oval Office. And then once again, we have some corresponding tw uh, tweets and you can you can click, you know, left or right just to see what's most interesting. Some are actually coming up as recent, but sometimes you, you get things from 2022, 2023. Actually, this is, this is actually getting better than some previous one. Look, 52 minutes ago, someone talking about it. So it will get even more relevant over time, but um, this is relevant enough for such a generic question that I just asked. But given I asked that in fun mode, it wasn't overly a fun answer. Let's just go to regular mode and see if we get, for instance, the same tweets or, or the same basic response. Probably not. Something a little bit more formal, I would expect. Okay, so here we go. Not quite a accurate answer or even a proper answer at this stage. So it goes based on the information provided. It seems that Donald Trump is likely to be the Republican nominee for the 2024 presidential election. Yep. Then it goes on to say, however, the Democratic nominee has not been determined yet. Which it sort of has and it hasn't. It seems in the US politics that Democratic circles are saying that if Biden feels he can, then let him. So perhaps they're going off that and we'll have a look at some tweets. The first one's not overly uh, relevant there. The second one, a little bit swaying to the right there. Then another three hour old tweet about... Who could actually replace Biden as the Democratic presidential nominee? Which has perhaps helped it to use this data or provide this output as a result. So this is not a politics video. It's just a question to see how the responses reflect reality and even especially tweets. So one last question, testing out the, the tweeting or extracting of data capability. Let's ask it, what's the latest updates with, uh, let's say, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Now, I'll ask this question twice because what I want to do is see how it answers. So this one is just getting information that it might have from anywhere. The second one, I'll ask it about the tweets. So based on the information provided, the latest update on uh, Olaf Scholz includes, he's the German Chancellor. <laughs> okay, great. Yes, he certainly is. Concerns about the uh, the federal budget there. Yet yeah, that's fairly recent news. But let's ask it uh, again. Um, search for most recent tweets. I think that the X platform still calls it tweets. So we'll wait for a response here. And here we go. So based on the provided information, the latest... Whoop, it's got to zoom up for that one. Uh, it's basically the same information. Uh, let's see, that looks like the same-ish tweets as well as from before. Uh, there is one different, one the same, but um, yeah, so a little bit of work to go. I, I would actually have very high hopes for this uh, AI LLM, this large language model, given who it's backed by, but also connected to or its integration with Twitter, which I wouldn't think is completely integrated with Twitter right now some slightly generic answers, but the high hopes are still there because the opportunity to better integrate with uh, Twitter or x.com is there like no other platform. So that's about it, guys. Uh, I'll just let you know the price is roughly 10 to $15, uh, <laughs> depending on your currency, where you're watching this from. So let's say about 10 US dollars to, to, to get the uh, premium x.com service that allows a whole bunch of things in decreased ads and uh, of course grok itself 
And like I said earlier in the video, region dependent. So before you go buying a premium uh, subscription on Twitter, x.com, just yeah, check that your region supports grok.ai. Also, if you haven't used or logged into Twitter in a while and you do and you have to change your password, you will be locked out from actually getting the premium uh, version of x.com that allows for Grok because it will consider your recent update of activity, changing the password as potentially malicious actions or from an untoward actor. But I just wanted to add that in to save you the worry or headache of um, experiencing that yourself, not knowing what's going on. You do have to wait a little bit sometimes. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.